Tristram Shandy by Lauren Stern, abridged version, book review. Uh, so I never heard of this book before, but apparently it's a classic. A friend loaned me the audiobook version. Uh, the audiobook version is abridged. Uh, I usually don't like abridged versions of stuff, it just drives me crazy that somebody else has kind of edited stuff out and I don't even know what I'm missing. But, you know, sometimes it can't be helped. Like in this case, it was the abridged version or nothing because that's all we had. And we were out in Japan when my friend loaned this to me. So, here's my review of the audiobook abridged version of Tristram Shandy. There were some interesting notes uh, on the CD jacket. The audiobook came on a CD. Um, <clears throat> they talked about how difficult it was to make an audiobook out of Tristram Shandy because, quote, Stern's visual tricks have posed a challenge for the creator of this audiobook version. Tristram Shandy is, after all, a typesetter's worst nightmare. One page is black, another marbled, a third left blank to give the reader the opportunity to draw the image of his fantasy woman. Stern here anticipated the interactive media of our era in more senses than one. Several pages set out an elaborate Latin curse and a parallel English translation. There are a number of wonderfully expressive squiggles too. We have attempted to provide oral equivalents for most of these playful tricks. It is astonishing that so avant-garde a work should have been published so early in the history of the newly emergent English novel. Contemporary readers were amazed. Uh, Tristram Shandy was originally published between 1760 and 1767. So contemporary readers were amazed. Subsequent students of literature, no less so." End quote. Well, I must count myself among those who were so amazed. Reading this book, or listening to it, it reminded me of the Shakespeare class I took back in university. Uh, at first, because the language is so old, it was like reading a foreign language. But the more you read it, the more you get used to the language, and then pretty soon you'll, you're able to read it just like any other book. And then once you get to that point, then you start thinking to yourself, hey, this is actually pretty funny. I didn't know people could be that this funny way back then. Uh, update the wording a little bit, and these jokes could be on TV nowadays. At least that's how Shakespeare felt for me. And Tristram Shandy progressed much the same way. The first CD, I didn't have a clue what was going on. Once I got used to it though, and once I found myself getting used to the style of the language, then I found it was funny, surprisingly funny and surprisingly bawdy. After I finished it, I went back and re-listened to the first disc and found myself enjoying it much more the second time. There's a surprising amount of sexual humor and innuendos, as well as a lot of black humor. Much of the humor seems to be derived from people acting totally irreverent in very tra tragic situations. The funniest part of the book, for me, was when the brother dies. So it's a tragic situation, but they play it for laughs. The father is furious because the son died without his permission. It's sort of like a black humor from Monty Python or something like that. 